Welcome to Quick Shots, a short format traditional archery podcast, where we introduce you to some of the world's most influential traditional archers, and occasionally, some random dudes. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Quick Shots. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification. We upload a new episode every Wednesday, and they just keep getting better and better. If you or someone you know is an interesting trad archer, leave a comment below. We'd love to get you on the show. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the tradlifearchery.com. We have toques, we have hats, we have mugs, just a bunch of stuff over there. And anything you buy goes to support this channel. We do really appreciate it. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Quick Shots. My name is Mick Chambers. I'm your host. I'm here with Christy Lyons, uh, Barebow National Champion. Hi, Christy. How are you doing? Hi. Oh my God. Thank you for joining us. This, this gives my, this is street cred to my, my podcast now, my vodka. It's unbelievable. Thank what? you. You're so amazing. <laughs> You're so amazing. Like I'm honored that you asked me to be on. So oh, I was really God. happy when you asked me because uh, I had a lot of fun with you at the boot camp. So okay. take your pictures. I'm going to have to edit that out for my, our, our husband and wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway we did and it was nice to see you at the barebow boot camp that was your first time doing 3d right oh no no i I've, I've done it a few times at my club but i haven't really like trained it you know yeah. i went out with fawn at the beginning of the season when i thought field was going to happen um because i wanted to start learning how to really judge ranges and stuff like that and then when field got canceled i decided to just focus on the 50 meter game because i had like only a couple months to do that up until that point, most of my shooting, outside of my a couple of my bareball friends like dragging me out at my local club, had all been indoors. So, hey, so I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna back up now. All right. So what I want, what I would love is if you could introduce yourself and and just give us some of the, some of the stuff you've done. Like when did you start archery? You know, what's your origin story on archery? And then just kind of start from there and just give all the listeners kind of your background. That would be so awesome if we go through that. Okay, um, so I started archery uh, about a, a little over a year and a half ago. I was really trying to get my daughter into it because I, I have three daughters. My middle daughter was going into the military. Hmm. My oldest daughter lives in Ohio, but my middle daughter was going into the military. So I was only gonna have one daughter at home and they're very, very close. So I wanted to give her an activity to do for, you know, when her sister left. So I brought her in for a private. Um, I brought her in for a private. She did a private and I was watching them and, and I was very interested in, in what she was learning and I wanted to be able to help her out more. So I think it was like the next day or a couple of days later, I, I went in and I was like, I'm going to go during open shoot and, and see if I can kind of figure this out so I can help her. And, and I really liked it. And I woke up the next morning and I was like, oh, I think I want to go back to that archery range again and, and shoot some more. Cause that was a lot of fun yesterday. That's great. So I went back to, you know, and I shot again and I was like, Oh boy. Like, I'm really in trouble. I really love this. This is a lot of fun. And, and I want to do this a lot. It, and so I went and talked to the owner, who is now my coach, Jeff, Dan Chazip, and uh, said, look, you know, can, you know, we do a private lesson. So we, we did that. And it just, like, I started just practicing every day, like every day. So that, when my daughter left for boot camp, that was what I turned to to help me. I really missed her. Yeah. So I was shooting a lot because that was what was helping me get through her, her being gone. I didn't have her to talk to and, and I was really sad. So by shooting, I, I could just mentally focus on the process of shooting. And to me, it's very meditative um, to shoot. So I, I really can't think about anything sad or, you know, I just focus on my archery and, and it just became a habit, a healthy habit that I love. So how long yeah. ago was this? Uh, April of 2019. I think we're getting a little bit of, oh, it's better now. I, I thought we are getting, so April of 2019. What did you mm -hmm. say? What? What? Yeah. <laughs> April 2019. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and now you're, you're one of the, you, if not arguably the, the top female shooter, um, definitely an NFAA. Um, you, you have a, you have a rec world record, right? Or a, a record NFAA. So what, so what would happen is, so, so I started training and everybody kept telling me that like, you know, I was shooting really good, but I just thought they were telling me that to encourage me. And, uh, and then finally Jeff looked at me one day and he's like, 
you need to go look up scores. So I, I was kind of like keeping track of my scores, but I was using it like as a feedback for the things I was trying. You know, I didn't really care about my scores more than just that, you know, I knew my scores were going up because of the things that I was doing to in, improve my shooting. So I, I go and I look up the scores one day, I, I think it was like in August. And and I saw the scores and I saw that like my practice scores were like up there with, with some of the top girls. And I was like, oh my God. So my husband's working on the car outside and I, and I walk up and I, and I put my hands on my knees and I'm like, I think I'm going to be sick. And he goes, why? I said, oh my gosh, I, I've got to try competing, you know, archery because my scores are really good. Like they're not just a little good. They're like really good. And I want to see how far I can take this because this is crazy. You know, I don't know if I can do this in competition or not. He's like, okay, you, you do what you need to do because I was like kind of freaking out. And so then about a month later, so I'm getting excited and I start talking to Jeff like, you know, I think I want to try competing. And, and so he's telling me about like, you know, these shoots, Vegas and Lancaster, right? I, I didn't know about any of this. So I was like, I, I think I want to try all those. And then I found out like Lancaster was having for the first time ever, like a women's bare bow division. And I was like, well, I definitely want to do that because I want to like, you know, help women get their own division at Lancaster. So, so I started planning that in a, in, in September, I ended up falling and breaking my leg. Yeah. And the first thing out of my mouth was like, Oh my God, like I wanted to try this archery thing and I just broke my leg. So I was like devastated that I had broken my leg and I was being told it was going to take the kind of break that it was. I needed surgery and it was going to take a very, very long time to heal. But my team was amazing and they all stepped up and said, don't worry about it. You can shoot. Like if you need to sit on a stool, you can you know, sit on a stool. If you need us to pull your arrows, we'll pull your arrows. So they helped me keep training because I really wanted to try competing. So they, and they did, they carried my stuff. They, they pulled arrows for me. And as I, as I was getting better and able to do more and more and start walking with a cane, but well, I started my first competitions in November. I, I decided that I was going to do as many local competitions as I could because I knew what I was lacking was experience. Like mm -hmm. I had no experience shooting on a line. So I just started like doing every, almost every weekend starting in November and I still wasn't walking well. I started doing local competitions all the way through January. By the time indoor season was done, I was exhausted because I was doing every weekend, sometimes two a weekend, just to, just to get as much experience as I could before Lancaster. And then I went to Lancaster and, um, and, I, and I was so excited to meet everybody, but I shot and I, and I shot really well. I like qualified fifth next to people that I, I had been on YouTube just sucking up videos and, and watching these women shoot. And they were my idols, like, you know, Fawn and, and Claire and, yeah. and Chintzia, like Lena, like all of them. I was like watching them like crazy going, oh, I wish one day I can, I can be as good as them because they're so good. Like I was so amazed watching them. And to do that, like I shot my last arrow. I knew what my score was. I knew how close I was to them. And I just start crying. Like I know some other people saw me crying, but I was crying because I couldn't believe that that was happening to me that I shot that well at my first really big competition. And so then uh, I did Vegas. I did very, very well. I ended up in the first flight. I was super excited about that. But what I'm really, really happy about is all along doing this, I had decided to like kind of post things on Facebook that I was doing, which I wasn't a really big Facebook person before that. I would, I would post occasionally or check on my family, but yeah. I decided to save all those steps along the way. So I get to look back at that and go, oh my gosh, like all the things that have happened in the past year, it's, it's all there. You know, everybody saw it happening to me. So that was kind of also like a really cool aspect of it. Like now I'm starting to look back because it's almost the Lancaster time and these posts are popping up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've come so far in like one year. Like, you know, it's just been kind of a crazy journey. It's unbelievable. It is, it is unbelievable. Um, I actually started um, a YouTube channel, um, you know, Road to PA, my barebo journey. And that started in February for me. And now here I am, you know, in January, almost a year later. And I have to tell you, I'm, I'm probably very close to like that three month in where, you know, I just like, I'm still back to it. Like I didn't, I didn't stick to it. And unfortunately, 
I stuck to it. Sorry, I stuck to it. But I, there was hunting season and a bunch of other stuff that got in the way. And lots Just of so people- you know, I have some friends who are asking that you do more of those. They were actually following you, some of my teammates. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll keep doing it. I'm going to try and do it. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate <laughs> anyone that's following that. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a sad story, actually. So it's, it's, I, here's where you did the right thing, right? Right from day one, I advocate this. I don't do it, though. Get a coach. Like you had a coach, you had direction, you had uh, focus. Um, and I think that, and you, you joined a club and you shot as much as you possibly can in front of people. And that helps you to overcome those nerves that helps you to get that experience that you, you talked about. I think all those things are really, really important lessons that, you know, you as a role model in the sport, I'm glad you said all those things that you just said. It's just, it's just amazing. You know, people can sit in their backyard and shoot all they want, but, it, but when it comes down to it, Get your heart going, get your rate, your heart rate going, and then have that experience you have and get a coach. And that's where I. I Shooting on a line and shooting around other people. You know, it also makes archery fun. Like, Mm. I I don't know what I love more, the actual art, you know, the the shooting because it's so meditative, but also like the people that I'm shooting with. Like that's, I love the community of archery. They have become, not a lot of people know this, but I grew up in the foster care system, so I didn't grow up with a family, and archery has become that family I didn't have when I was younger. So they are so, like, my coach is amazing, and when I falter in my, my belief of myself, he's always, like, right there, like, I'm always laughing, and I'm going, you believe in me so much more than, I, you know, I believe in myself, and so there's a lot of times that his belief in what I'm doing gets me through whatever I'm, I'm facing at that point, you know, like I always have a cheerleader and my teammates are always like, you know, keeping me going when, when I doubt what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So having that resource and and having them help you not only with the physical aspect of shooting and and learning the process and, and helping you, like I'm working on things now. And so it's a continuing like learning process, but I also have that, um, support. We have such an amazing team we are getting more people. Like I just, we had somebody else join last night. So I love that my team is my family. So if you have access to that, I absolutely like advocate, you know, get yourself a little archery family or people you can shoot with because then you challenge each other and it helps you grow as an archer too. Okay. Let's, let's, let's give a shout out to your team and uh, where your guys are located. And uh, let's mention some of the people on the team because I'll tell you right now, hopefully this will hear, someone will hear in the Chicago area and tell us where you are in that area. Um, So So, yeah, give us that whole detail. I live in the Southwest suburbs and my team club is uh, Bodak Archery. It's located in Mokina and um, oh boy, Uh, Jeff Sanchez is my coach. I have so many teammates and I'm so scared of leaving somebody out (laughs) because they all know I love them. So they are everywhere from like, you know, beginner archers to advanced archers. I have a teammate named Wayne and Paul who shoot almost as good as me. Sometimes they, they, they shoot better than me. And then I'm like trying to race to catch up to them. So like we kind of go back and forth. And I love that about our team is, you know, bare bow is a roller coaster ride. And, and sometimes you're, you're on fire and, and, and you're shooting great for, where you normally shoot. And then sometimes like you, you have a couple of weeks that aren't as strong as you would like them to be. So, you know, if you're, if you're in a good team, that back and forth can keep you pushing through. So, and, but you know, they're just, they're such, they're such great people. And we're, we're getting women on the team too, which has me like really excited. Yeah. And I just, want, I just want to give a plug to bowdoc.com. And Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see Chrissy on there as well. You'll see Jeff on the front page. Um, And if you're in the, if you're in that area, go check them out. Um, If you want to shoot with some of the best uh, archers in the world, uh, go there. Um, Yeah. And they do compound and Olympic recurve as well. And we have some phenomenal adult and Joe Ed shooters. Um, Kathy, Cassie is the other coach that's there. She's a compound shooter and she won her division for a compound. So, and we, and we have all ages with, with the Olympic recurve in the compound as well. And Joe Ad, of course. Mm-hmm. 
So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And that, that support system is so good. I mean, it's almost unfair. Really. I feel like it's unfair. I think, I feel like you're cheating now. Um, Maybe a little. <laughs> Cause I mean, here I am trying to do it in my basement and it's just not working out for me. <laughs> well, come visit us. Come visit I, us. I'd love to shoot with you. Yeah. I, I, I'm not shooting with you. That is never going to happen because I just, it, <laughs> What? Uh, I, I just, I'm, no, I'm kidding. Of course I'm kidding. I'll shoot next to anyone, right? I shot ne next to Winker the other, you know, when we were at the Bear Boat Boot Camp. Now that's, you know, all you guys, that was a lot of pressure. and um, But that was a lot of fun, that Bear Boat Boot Camp. Did you have a good time? I did. And I learned a lot. And, you know, that definitely helped me with my longbow that I just did. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about that. That kind of motivated me to do that too. Like when that opportunity came up for me. And, and, you know, I was, I was teasing the guys a little bit at the, the bare boat boot camp saying, you know, like I'm coming. Yeah, you're, <laughs> I said, you're, one day I'm going to try longbow and I'm going to come with that too. So <laughs> you're there. It just kills me when I saw you shoot that. What'd you shoot the other day? Um, the NFA nationals. Yeah. The NFA nationals. Um, yeah. Well, shooting. I was like, oh, thank my you. Goodness. I yeah. was, I was shocked too, because, um, I hadn't shot for 10 days. I, I had gotten COVID and I was under quarantine. So I had one day to practice, but I hadn't really been shooting for the couple of months before that because I was trying to recover my wrist. I had a little bit of overuse going on with my wrist. So mm -hmm. it's taken some time out, off. Plan to give myself three, three weeks to get ready for that with the longbow and kind of work on my release. And uh, then I got sick. So I got about a week, week and a half in there to practice with the longbow. And then I got cut off again. So, are you guys are you guys open right now? Is your club open right now? It is, right? We are for like private lessons. It's it's a little hard in Illinois. Mm -hmm. So um I know that we're open for private lessons right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's exactly going on with that. I I'd have to check, but no, no, I mean people should check. People all yeah, I'm saying is for people yeah. that want to go and, and they're working and they, they want to go see yeah. or get start training and, and bear bow, oh absolutely bow, Olympic recurve um compound whatever you shoot you can go and and, and see your coach and, and uh yeah does he and we do we have a lot of people jeff's got a great reputation so we have people that come in from other states and train with him for sure. you know so it's not unusual for you know i know he has a couple of distance students that come in specifically to work with him because he's so great with working with the joey kids now let's talk about um, let's talk about your gear because I know if I can just get the same equipment you have, I can be just as good as you, and that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's totally not true. But you know, it does help. It's it's a curiosity factor, and, and one of the biggest questions I get is that, hey, what does that guy girl shoot uh, on a regular basis? So what what is your setup so, for bare bow right now? So right now I'm shooting the ATFX, and uh, but this is this is a new setup. So I, I'll, I'll get to the gear part, but what I want to tell people is yeah. you don't have to necessarily have a really high end setup to shoot. Well, yeah. I started off on, um, well, over the summer I was shooting a forge riser, but originally before that I was shooting, a um, Axiom plus riser. So like a good entry level, um, recurve riser will work with decent limbs because mostly what you're working on is you're trying to improve your form, right? Mm -hmm. So you're trying to set up a process, you're trying to set up your, your form. And so I kind of took a lot of pride that I was, I was shooting really good scores and it wasn't the super high end of, you know, set up. Mm -hmm. So don't let that stop you from trying to compete because there's a lot of valuable experience just going into a competition, awesome. you know, with whatever you have just shoot, just shoot and work on your form. And then later on down the line, if you, you, you want to get something pretty like I did, then you can get that, you know, but don't let what you're shooting stop you from trying to improve your form and try to improve as an archer, because a lot of that comes from your training, your practice, you, getting, you know, consistent in your shot. You know, it's not, it's not all equipment. It's, it's, it's here, you know, it's dedication, it's practice. It's working with a coach if you can. So, but my gear that I'm shooting right now that I'm going into uh, indoor season is an ATF X riser with UCA limbs. I'm shooting 34 pounds limbs. I have a biter plunger, a ZT rest, and um, I was I'm trying a couple different arrows. So 
But right now, what I'm playing with the most is the RX-7s from Easton with uh, 520 spine, 100, point, uh, 100 grain points. Okay. You, I think I got you, it all. Oh, a Yoast tab. A Yoast. I love Yoast tab. Okay, like you're never going to rip that off out of my hands. I love my Yoast tab. Yeah, so cool. I'll play with everything else, but not with that. And I think also I have a 20 ounce Yoast weight right now I'm playing with. I'm kind of playing with the weights on it. That might change, but yeah, I think that's. Oh, and a Jaeger grip. Got a JD3 grip. JD3 grip, nice. Yeah, I thought I'm having a lot of fun with that too. That's, that's a, a new addition. So. Yeah, I'm using the JD3 grip too, and, and I mm -hmm. love it. I, I love it. It just feels good in your palm. So Yeah, I, I like how it, it helps me have like a consistent feeling in my palm yeah yeah it's it's nice it's it is it's good it's pretty good i hate to give him credit but you know that's yeah uh, how yeah. we have to give him credit yeah you, you have to you kind of have to uh you know he's he's pretty good everybody dude. knows i'm good with him so. <laughs> yeah, it's okay he the good part about uh john is that he's uh he can dish it out he can take it too oh know? yeah yeah. Oh yeah, we go back and forth all the time. Like out there at NFA, I happen to get in the, the group with him and Rick Stonebreaker. I don't know if I should tell this story. Please do <laughs> you can edit it out if you need to. Please but we're we're out there and we go to shoot and my shot wasn't terrible, but I didn't win that that target. And uh Rick Stonebreaker says, You shoot like a girl. I was like, Oh, now I know we're all good. Like it's on. Yeah. So we go to the next target. I can Completely stomped all three of their butts. I was like, "Yeah, I shoot like a girl, and you wish you did right now." So, <laughs> so yeah, that's the kind of banter that goes on all the time. You know, they're fun. They're all fun. I have a lot of fun with those guys. So, yeah, and I think a lot of people listening are like, "Sure, they can have fun where they're shooting. They're like the top three shooters in the world." You know, it's like Stonebreaker just broke a record too again. Um, you know, that, I was just that was my first time doing a field tournament. I was learning. You know, I was learning. So no, everybody has fun. I have the most fun when newer people, like I'm shooting with newer people. They're so, I'm having a good time. They're having a good time. You know, it's, it's not always about the scores, about who you're hanging out with. So I, I don't necessarily just want to hang out with like, you know, really great shooters. I like hanging out and shooting with people who are new I'm constantly like, come shoot with me, come shoot with me. Like we'll practice together. Several of my teammates are newer and I'm, and every time I run into somebody, you, you might want to avoid me because I'm going to try to drag you onto my team because I want to shoot with you more. So yeah. yeah, no, I like shooting with new shooters. That's good. That's so awesome. And that, that's good. Again, again, being a role model is, is fantastic. And you, and I, one of the things that I said, I got to get you on the show because you know, you posted something on Facebook is like, my goal this year is to promote my sport as much as possible, you know, and I think you do that anyway, just by virtue of just having an awesome personality and, and being a great shot. Um, and then going and then dedicating time to training, dedicating time to traveling, dedicating time to going to the events and actually participating in them. You know, th that's how you get where you are. And, and I think that that people are, you know, look up to that and respect that. At least I do. I have a lot of respect for you and, and just doing it in a year. I mean, ridiculous. Well, so my life has changed so much yeah. from archery and so much has happened and people have been so supportive that I have, I, I feel this obligation to give back, mm. you know, my, my life, I never thought I could be this happy Oh. And I want other people to experience that too. Like it's been life, it's truly been life changing for me. And, and I, so I just, I just want to give back and, and I want to show other people that, and, you know, maybe if I could pass it forward, you know, pay it forward. So, but also it's just, it's such a great sport. Like we, we should be just pouring in people because you can be like a, an eight year old all the way up to an older person. And you can do this activity. Like, mm -hmm. I can't run anymore. I probably could work up to it, but I, I personally can't run a marathon. I don't, I don't have the, you know, the cardio for that, but I could shoot a bow, you know, yeah, yeah. I had a broken leg and I could shoot a bow. Yeah, yeah. So there's so much accessibility to it. I don't know how it's not bigger, like even bigger than it is because it's such a fun thing to do. It's fun to go out in the woods and, and shoot at animal targets and, you know, just enjoy nature. 
So yeah, like it's, I just feel like that's what I should be doing. So that's what I'm doing with my life now. <laughs> Uh, I, th I think it's amazing that you uh, came into the sport and I think that we're, we're, we're better for it for sure. Um, and so we, I really appreciate it. And I, I want to talk a little bit. Uh, <laughs> this is what kills me about you. First of all, you're left-handed. No, actually I'm a righty. You're righty? I shoot lefty though. Yeah. So you're right-handed, but you shoot left. Mm -hmm. So obviously your coach didn't know what he was doing. So we should probably go back and erase some of that. He's got no, he, he actually was the one during my first lesson. He picked that one up and, that the only and, and it's true. Like right. I'm definitely like a left-handed shooter. So that was the only, the, he only had one bow left for sale. It was a left-hander. So no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jeff, you, we got your number, buddy. Uh, you know, he actually shoots right-handed compound and he chose to shoot left-handed, um, bare bow. Really? Yeah, he chose he chose to do that. I think to help him start over or something like that. But yeah. So are you left eye dominant? Yes. Okay, cool. So that's what he 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 picked up on the yes. left eye dominance and Str strongly so strongly so. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that well that's an interesting twist to the story too. And I just people left handed. I don't know what that witchery is that you guys have. <laughs> It's just lefties, you know, and redheads. That Maybe it's a, I heard like when I, it made that whole, like, if you're right-handed, you use the left side of your brain. If you're left-handed, you use the right side of your brain. Sure. Maybe it has something to do with that. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but it's working for me. So I'm going to stick with it. We don't, we don't get that technical on this show. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> too much science. It works. Whatever. You know, I'm just going to roll with it. And then. And then you, so you, you, you obviously mastered Baribo. You don't have to do that anymore. So you put that. What? Down, oh yeah, I know. That's my world. <laughs> you put, put Baribo down, you threw away the, the Baribo and now you're on to Longbow. No. <laughs> so the deal was <laughs> when I went to this, I went to a sports specialist, like, you know, really great doctor in Chicago um, about my wrist. And he recommended that I cut back. And so he, wanted you know so I ended up not shooting completely but Jeff looked at me and said he wanted me to reduce everything by 30 percent and I had picked up Jeff's longbow just fiddling around a couple of times and shot it was like oh, this is fun I like this like can I compete this you know jokingly yeah. but he offered me to shoot his Medusa longbow because it was lower poundage and I have a problem where I can't seem to not shoot my bow Fiction, <laughs> yeah. And he's a great coach. He, he knows this about me. Like, I'm, I'm so competitive. He knew I would be like, but these competitions are coming and I need to get ready. And, and he knew I wouldn't be able to say no. So the agreement was, is I could not shoot my bare bow, but I could shoot his longbow for FAA. So that's how he got me. Like, yeah, I have self-control issues. I'm 45 years old and I have self-control issues when it comes to archery. I'm not even going to lie. You know, my coach is all over that. He's great. So he gave me you know, it was hard. There were some days I was looking at my bow and I'm going, and I think I posted on Facebook too, like, I can't touch my bow. Like, I was like going through withdrawal, not touching my bow because I was like, what do I do with myself now? Like, I can't touch my bow. I don't want to go back to gaming. You know, like, what am I going to do? Yeah. So, but the, the long bow was a lot of fun, but it's not my bow. It's his bow. So, and I financially, I mean, I'm still raising a kid and I'm doing all this traveling. So I have to pick and choose my battles mm -hmm. and I can't afford a longbow and, and my bare bow archery that I'm doing right now. So mm -hmm. it's bare bow because I, I, I'm bare bow first as much as I, I love shooting that longbow. It was like amazing to shoot it, you know, and I'm sure at some point maybe I'll be lucky enough to go back to that, but yep, it's bare bow. It's awesome. <laughs> hey, I want you to brag just a little bit, just be, we probably should have did this at the very beginning. Give me your, your accomplishments in this year. What break them down for me. Um, so I ranked fifth at Lancaster at, um, uh, Vegas. I was the highest U S women's score, second highest score overall. Um, uh, me and Maria were in flight one. It was great. Nice. Um, what did I do after that? Oh, it states. Um, I was first, for senior women at 18 and 25 and high bear both score overall. Nice. And then I went to outdoor and won national championship for senior women's bear bow at 50 meter. 
mm-hmm. and second place at the U.S. Open. Wow. And then um, went to NFAA, oh, got the ball for field and target, and got to shoot head-to-head with John Demmer at the Dakota Classic. Nice. <laughs> that was fun and terrifying. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing, but... Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I'm standing in the line going, oh, my God, I'm shooting against John Ever. <laughs> I'm like, okay, just got to hold my own, you know. <laughs> so uh, so got the second place with that. And then um, I just uh, shot NFAA longbow and broke the record for that. So for women. Yeah. And, oh, in the world record. And I got a... Uh, the combined and the 25 meter USA record. I'm trying to remember all this. I know it's, that's, that's it's a little too good. much. And I'm that a little embarrassed to say it all. No, no, that was my point. It's like, <laughs> my point was, oh my goodness, you got a lot of accomplishments in one year. I had these, you know, I had these dreams that I was going to start and I was like, maybe I'll be good at this. And you know what? I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> so, but I'm so happy when someone else is, I'm like, that is so cool. But everybody has their own journey, right? Yes. So right. Not everybody has like I my schedule had opened up. You know, I was just I was a mom and I didn't work a ton of hours because I needed to be available for, for my daughter and she was in school. So I had a lot of time to practice, you know. Not some people are working full time and, and maybe they can't practice that much or they, they don't have access to a coach. So wherever you are in your journey that's where you are and you never know like maybe you're here today but you don't know where you're going to be a year from now all you can do is try to practice when you have that availability and improve your game so everybody's journey is still important like it's important to them it's a magical thing it's whatever it takes you to shoot not everybody wants to compete some people just want to go out and have a good time with you know other archers and and just shoot you know so everybody's journey is different. And so I don't, I don't say, you know, if you're enjoying it, that's all that matters because it's supposed to be a hobby for most of us. Like we're supposed to just be having a good time doing it. So if you're having a good time, you're winning, you're, you're winning good. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, always, it's always nice. It's all, always more fun when you win though. Um, uh, I won't say, I won't say it's not, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. It's, it's a little crazy too. So <laughs> But, but it, it, you know, I won't say it's not, but, you know, there's different, there's different avenues to try to. There's so much, I'm still learning. There's so many different types of shoots. There's 3D, there's indoor, there's outdoor, there's field. So there's so many different ways that you can shoot, you yeah. know, so many different, you know, you got compound, Olympic recurve, bare bow, long bow, you know, traditional. So there's a little bit of something for everybody. And so you just have to decide what, what you want to get out of it and then go for that. You know, it might take some work. It might take some effort. You know, you might have to, you have to make a choice and, you know, what you're willing to give towards it, but whatever makes you happy, if that's your goal and, and you're enjoying yourself, I don't, I don't think there's a wrong form of archery. I think it's all amazing. So. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. I would actually normally at this time in the interview, I would just ask, what's some advice you would give to someone new coming into the sport, but we all, we were kind of you have fun. Yeah. You have fun. Make friends, have fun, you know, try different things. It, I used to tell my daughters all the time, like, you know, find something that you're passionate about and, and make it your journey. But that's like become my mantra because then like when all this started, I was like, look, I tried something. I, I didn't ever see my life being where it is right now, but I tried something new and I decided Along, you know, my goals changed when I first started. When if you would have looked at me and said, uh, "You should try competing archery," I was kind of like, mm, "No, I I might try those pins. Those pin things look really cool." And I and I did mention that the first. I was like, "I think I'd like to see how far I can get in those pins." You know, yeah. <laughs> which is still I have not finished them. I'm still going for my gold pin. So that's still one of my my original goal, which was to shoot for my pins. I'm still working on that. So you can start off and just do like pins because that's, that's just against yourself. It's just trying to like increase your skill with archery. It's self-paced. So however you want to do it, Mm -hmm. you know, just start simple, go out and have fun with your local club. 
you know, find an archery friend. If you want to try competing, that's great. If you don't, you just want to shoot in your backyard, you just want to do 3Ds, just whatever gets you shooting on that line and having fun because that's what it's supposed to be about. Absolutely. And, and I, I was going to say, we, we covered a lot at the very beginning too about you don't have to buy an expensive bow, you know, get no. a coach, all those things. It, the barrier to entry archery should not be cost, I don't think. No, no, it shouldn't. Because, you know, there there's some people that, you know, you, you go to your local club and talk to them, you know, try some of their bows. There's affordable options out there if, if money is a barrier. There are affordable options out there that you can shoot very, very well. Like I didn't have, I thought I was going to be buying more than one archery setup when I first started. Mm -hmm. And and I had, my daughter was traveling all over the country for marching band. So I didn't have a ton of money to start archery right out of the gate. And, and my, my starting setup to me was, was pretty affordable. And it, it got me all the way to Lancaster and Vegas. And, you know, so you, you can shoot pretty well with that kind of stuff. You know, if it, it might take a little saving and scrimping and, We've had to go without a little bit in this house for some of the things that I've wanted. I'm not going to say we haven't, but it's not, it's not needed when you're first starting and you, and you, there, you can usually find somebody that will work with you on that if, if that's what's stopping you. Well, you're certainly a champ um, and it's a, a great testimony to, you know, um, just self-realization and just taking it, realizing that you you, you know, you wanted to do this and you just, you just follow through with it. I mean, I, I just, it's an amazing. A little bit insane. The amount of hours I practice is, is a little crazy. Just, But you know what? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a good, it's a good story. And I'm not by any means saying, you know, I, I'm absolutely glad you brought that up because it's hard work, right? It's hard work to be a champion. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you just, it just doesn't come overnight. So uh, I'm, I appreciate you being so good at that because honestly you're a great ambassador for the sport and so it's nice to know you and it's nice to meet you um where can people find you uh if they want to the to talk to you online or, or ask you a question? oh i'm on facebook okay so uh chrissy lion chrissy dot lions one okay. but you can you can find me in the bear bowl group um i'm a member there and uh you know if if you're an archery and you want to be friends I'm, I'm pretty, as long as I, I do check and make sure people are kind of archers before I accept them, <laughs> you know. I'm um, still waiting but, for the request. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, just say like, you know, if, if I don't like accept you right away, it's just, hey, I shot you. I saw you on that, you know, can can we be friends? And if you shoot a bow, I'm, I'm willing to be friends with you, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no weirdos need to apply. Uh, we totally get that. Um and we got to get you set up on Instagram so you got something on, going on there because we got to follow Instagram's a big a big platform and it would be really nice to follow your 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 progress and just see all that. Don't worry my 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 daughters make fun of me cuz I'm not like with the times all the time, you know. <laughs> you could be like Frank Madonna and get on TikTok too and then <laughs> Oh, 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 yeah, no, you don't want me on TikTok. <laughs> I cause enough trouble on Facebook. Yes. So so one more time, one more time, uh, tell us about your club, where it's at, and, um, and uh, we'll wrap It's Bodak Archery. It's located in Mokina, Illinois. Uh, Bodak.com. Yep. Bodakarchery.com. I think I got that right. That is, right. That is correct. <laughs> I have to look it up. I look at, I look but, it up. but yeah, it's, you know, and if you have any questions, I, I love helping. I, I can't, you know, answer everything, but, you know, at least encourage you or, if you, you need help finding a local coach, I'll, I'll do whatever in my power. I'll ask around, I'll, I'll network. Um, I'll ask on Bearbow group, whatever to, to get you a coach, if that's what you need, or, you know, women ask me questions, girls ask me questions. So if I can help, I'm always, I'm always trying to help, you know, guide people in the right direction, but you know, there's still a lot I'm learning too. I'm, I'm learning every day, you know, so I'm still, I'm still a toddler. The first year I said I was a bare bow baby, but I'm just a bare bow toddler. There's a lot of the technical stuff. I still, I'm still learning that. So <laughs> yeah, you're, you're killing men or women. It doesn't matter. Um, but you're just doing fantastic. Anyway, Chrissy, thanks very much again for, for taking this interview. Um, it's a, it's a big help uh, for me because it's just having someone so, you know, it's with so much hardware on the show is awesome. Um, so really appreciate <laughs> it. 
Thanks so much. All right. And for all our yeah. listeners, um, don't forget to uh, like and share and subscribe and, you know, pass this along. And if you know someone that would be interested in um, hearing Christy talk about uh, bare bow or longbow, and uh, so that you can um, kind of engage with uh, the bare bow community. And again, follow her on, uh, on uh, Facebook and we'll try and get her on Instagram as soon as you can, as soon as we can. <laughs> You're going to get me on there, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone. Have a great day and uh, be safe out there. Thank you.